Hello everyone, my name is Karina Schumann and I'm a doctoral student in social psychology at the University of Waterloo. Today I'll be sharing some research that I've conducted with my advisor, Dr. Michael Ross, who's also here at Waterloo, and that has recently been published in the journal Psychological Science. So there's a common stereotype that men apologize less frequently than women do. And this stereotype is promoted by various commentators, both academic and popular writers, who put forth the explanation that men apologize less frequently because they are unwilling to apologize, that they actively resist apologizing because it would damage their fragile egos. However, there is very little compelling evidence to support this stereotype, and so we wanted to conduct uh, some empirical research to determine whether or not women in fact apologize more frequently than men do, and if so, why this might be the case. In a first study, we had participants report on a daily basis any events throughout the day in which they had committed an offense against someone or someone had committed an offense against them. And for each offense that they reported, they indicated whether or not they had apologized for it or whether they had received an apology for it. In the first glance of the data, we found strong support for the stereotype that women apologize more than men do. Women on a daily basis offered many more apologies than men offered. However, at a second more careful glance at the data, it came to our attention that men and women actually apologized for an identical percentage of the offenses that they reported. So it's not just that men were reporting uh, offering fewer apologies than women had reported offering, it's also that they just perceived fewer offenses on a daily basis. And so from these data, we drew the conclusion that men might just have a higher threshold for what constitutes offensive behavior. And to test this threshold hypothesis, we ran a follow-up study in which we had participants imagine committing offenses against friends. And as predicted and in line with our threshold hypothesis, men rated the same offenses as less severe and as less deserving of an apology than women rated them and consequently they indicated that they would be less likely to apologize for these offenses. So what might be the cause of these gender differences in thresholds for offensive behavior? One possibility is that women might be more interpersonally focused than men are. And in line with this theory, uh, there's other research showing that women are more empathic than men are, that they experience more guilt after committing a transgression, that they um, are more likely to forgive after being the victims of a transgression. And all of these are uh, relationship promoting emotions and behaviors. A second possibility is that men might have a higher threshold for pain, both physical pain and social or relational pain. And in line with this theory, men report less frequent and less intense pain than women report. They also report the same stressors as being less severe than women report them to be, and uh, they report themselves as being less emotional than women report themselves as being. Regardless of the root causes of these gender differences in thresholds, however, we suspect that these discrepant perceptions of events might have negative consequences for mixed gender interactions. For example, a woman might interpret the absence of an apology for something that she feels offended by as an indication that her husband doesn't care about her well-being or the well-being of the relationship. Similarly, uh, the husband might interpret his wife's behavior as overly sensitive and emotional. What we want people to take away from this research, however, is that these discrepant perceptions do exist and that it might be more beneficial to the relationship if people recognize that these discrepant perceptions exist and rather than blame the other person, compare their perceptions and try to communicate and move forward from there. So hopefully you've enjoyed hearing about this research and thank you for listening.